right? But one of the things I wanted to ask too, and we can maybe close with this one. Um, the biggest thing that I see, because I've worked in security to some extent in the past, I've been in places where it is very easy to become racist. You've got really, yeah, it's, mm-hmm. let me qualify this. There's no good reason to become a racist, but there can be understandable ones. Mm-hmm. If a particular race beats up on you because you're a particular race for long enough, mm-hmm. you might just hate that race. Yeah. We're putting cops in a position to have to do the most virtuous thing every day, as far as I can tell. They're going to see couples beating each other up, go to help them, and then Mm -hmm. they get attacked, right? Right. This is their day-to-day. I have personally experienced times where I went to try to calm an aggressor down, and they played dramatically to a camera as if, I was wounding them, mm-hmm. right? It's because of my complexion, my shade of humanity, as I like to call mm-hmm. it now, I was targeted in that moment. And when that, if it was a one-time thing, right? I probably wouldn't even bring it up. I'd just say, this is a crazy story. Right. But it was happening to the point where it became a norm. Yeah. Yeah. But tomorrow, there's going to be a bunch of cops that still have to go out and do their Mm -hmm. job. What would you say to them right now with all of this going on? Yeah, I think it's a huge problem. I think, I mean, we've seen that with, you know, with every major war we've been in. Guys that come back with these, you know, they've been killing people of a, with certain level of melatonin in their skin for however long they've been over there. And that's the enemy. That's the enemy. And then all of a sudden they're supposed to turn that off. And, um, I think cops go through the same thing. I've talked to police officers before and they talk about that. And it's interesting. Like if you look at the, um, statistics, what's almost not reported at all is contact rates. Like if, and it's a huge, it's, it's the number you have to have to make a real correlation statistically between like, let's say a police, you know, precinct has way more violent encounters with black people than white people. Well, the next question you got to f- ask is, well, how many contacts is a given police officer? If, is that police officer having with people of that color so that you can correlate them. And that number is almost not anywhere. But it, to me, it's huge, not just to, for the statistics, but it's to understand like, that means if, if th- that means this police officer is having, uh, you know, however many negative encounters with a black person every single day, not any positive ones because of his job, that's his, interactions with those people are negative every day and how do how does how you how does someone guard themselves against exactly what you're describing is a kind of unseen slow gradual perception a jadedness right that festers which where now every time you roll up on a car that has and it might be a latino then you're having negative every day. Maybe you're down at the border and every day you're having horrible interactions with people from Mexico. And all of a sudden you roll up on a car and it's got people from Mexico in it. And what, what's happened? His heart rate's going up. He's tensing up. Adrenaline's pumping and he's not. <laughs> and this is like, it's an autonomic response. And I think it's a huge problem that nobody's really addressing is how do you guard your heart against that guard in your soul and even in your mind, your body chemistry from if I, if every time I walk up to you, I slap you. And then, I mean, I used to, it's my brother, old brother, older brother used to do this to me all the time. That's what it makes me think about is we'd pass each other in the hallway and he would give me a little punch in the stomach. 
as brothers do. He's, he's a great guy, but that's what he used to do. I would have done the same to him. But And after a while, it got where he didn't have to punch me in the stomach. Every time he passed me, I would just go Ugh, like that. And flinch, you know, yeah. and he would laugh, you know. And Pavlov. And I wonder how much, you know, how much of that has to do with some of the stuff we're seeing is these kind of conditioned responses. And instead of demonizing some of those guys, recognizing that that's a problem and finding ways, maybe you move people around where you're not working the same area all the time. I don't know what the answer to that is, but. I know I've, I've talked to police officers that have been in our church before and that this is why they quit is they worked for a while and they realized this is what they were doing is that they were not like when they encountered people of what, you know, if they were in a area, work in an area of town that was predominantly African American, all of their interactions, cause they're not going to cops don't get called for, to have parties. <laughs> They get called when bad things are happening. And he said he realized that that's what was going on in his head, and he just couldn't do it anymore. I've seen it go past race and into humanity itself. Mm -hmm. Eventually, you just... It just broadens. You just hate everybody who's not Mm -hmm. you eventually. Uh, It's a very bleak perspective, but it's also, again... It's what they see every day right. when you don't see the light. Mm-hmm. What would be some words of encouragement for those people? Do you think? I think the only I think it's one of the functions of the Holy Spirit is to keep our heart soft. To me, it's it's a it's a kind of hardening of the heart when that's happening, and to keep your heart soft means to remain vulnerable on some level of to getting hurt and for most people that's kind of an emotional thing right of well i'm going to continue to love people even though i'm going to continue to love men even though my husband hurt me and that's risky because i could get hurt again but for somebody like in the military or police officer that could be a physical thing and it's even harder and i think and but that's what we have to do to me it's not it's allowing your walk with god and inviting the holy spirit probably every single day to keep your heart soft and i think that's the only way and that cuz he, he can let you see past the immediate visual perceptions of people and see who people really are um I mean, you're calling people to willingly be hurt. Yep. You're calling people to have hope mm-hmm. when many of them have gotten to the point, whether it's the cop engaging in certain activities mm-hmm. or the oppressed minority being oppressed repeatedly by the right. same groups. You're asking, you're actually asking them right now, if I'm hearing you right. Mm hmm. Be willing to go get hurt tomorrow. Yep. I mean, what and are, hope for the good, right? Yeah, and and if that either that or you quit. I mean, goodness, those are horrible choices. But if if you can't do that, to me, that would be. I mean, I'm trying to put myself in the person in, in their shoes, and I think what I would be saying to myself is, if I wake up one day and I find that I can't that I am, my heart is now hard <laughs> and it's closed off and I can't find anyone to extend, to open my heart to that I'm working around. Then I got to do something else because I can't live that way. Um, because that's a, to me, that's a very dangerous place to be. You're either going to fall on one side into utter despair and hopelessness, right? As you're saying, like extrapolate your experience so wide that all of humanity is broken and unredeemable and, um, and you check out, Come, you know, emotionally, physically, suicide, you know, or you go the other way into 
pure malevolence against all the world, right? I'm going to go wreck the world because I've decided they're all evil and I'm going to, I'm going to do that. And so become the avenging angel of your own bitterness. And so those are two non-starters for me. I don't want to, I wouldn't want to end up in either place. The avenging angel of your own yeah. bitterness. It's like I know I know a lot of pastors, I and mean, this is a less um, a lesser example, but who have experienced so much rejection from their own churches that and we're seeing that all all the time now. They just don't they don't just bail on the church and say, "Well, I'm not going to pastor you if you don't want me to pastor you. I'll go somewhere else." They say, "I'm just not going to be a Christian anymore." <laughs> And they just, I'm out. So they go from pastoring a church to atheist. And you go, why does that happen? It's the same process to me is just the slow hardening of your heart against people, which widens and widens and widens until it's all encompassing. And it's a dark thing. And I, I think it's frustrating to me that not many people are talking about it. It's the oversimplification of because as soon as you start talking about understanding, like you you said, it's not there's no reason for there's no good reason for it, but there's you can understand it. As soon as you start talking about understanding the problem, because it's complicated, um, and you remove the caricature of a racist that we see on TV and in movies, who's a old white redneck with a wife beater T shirt on, and he's all. S- He's all sweaty and gross and loud and abrasive, and he's just yelling the N-word constantly, and then eventually he gets his in the movie, right? That's not – those people exist, but that's not the real – that's not the real face of racism. And to oversimplify it, I think, is is horrible. And so my heart goes out to people that are in that situation and whose hearts are breaking – and they're having, I mean, who wants to be a police officer right now? We're, I mean, I wouldn't sign up for that. They're talking about taking Chase off of Paw Patrol. Yeah, I know. It's like. Number one thing you want to do when the world thinks all cops are bad. Right. Is, or when cops might feel like their good deeds are going mm-hmm. unseen. Right. Is, yeah, obviously, let's take off the examples of cops doing it right. Right. Exactly. Remove the positive examples of police officers from children being able to see its madness. And that's got, an example to me of good intentions making it worse. Somebody's meaning to do well and do they're being empathetic and what can I do? What do I have power over that I can make a change? And they're running that show and they go, let's get rid of <laughs> this character it's like no it makes it worse yeah it we need heroes Mm -hmm. i think we've destroyed a lot of the old good stories that help teach us to be heroes in our lives and the scale that you described a minute ago with it being a pastor but it also being the same mechanism as Mm -hmm. a cop not only do we need more people being willing to be heroic Mm -hmm. and being aware that to be heroic, you have to be willing to be hurt. Mm-hmm. Even when it's likely. Yep. Because for me, that's marriage when it starts going sour, right? Yeah. Every day, I'm going to choose to believe that this will work out for the best, mm-hmm. even though I've got no reason not to. Right. And there's no, the, the scale level of choosing to be a hero or choosing to be a racist, mm-hmm. I think is infinite. Right. Tiny little choices, yep. big choices. And do you think there's a way that we can start to see those small opportunities to choose to be a hero better? 